Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. Welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. Today, I'm bringing you an online race. I decided to get more into online racing after my Forza multiplayer race I did the other day. If you guys didn't see that video, I'll link it in the end card. You can go check it out. But this is a race at Sardinia in the McLaren 650S. This was the daily race a couple of days ago, depending on when I post this. And yeah, I figured I'd bring you guys along, talk you through the race, see if you guys enjoy this format um, as I'm getting into, you know, racing and trying trying to dip my toe in online. Now this McLaren, uh, I race with ABS on, but all other assists off, so no traction control. And so this powerful rear wheel drive McLaren is a bit of a handful, especially on this course. There's a lot of elevation change. Uh, there's a lot of kind of bumps. The car can get light uh, coming out of these corners, which is tricky for accelerating out. Just in general, with racing, with powerful cars, um, you do not want to be accelerating hard while you're turning either in or out of corners. Um, and this car really demands that you pay attention to that. Uh, although, as we'll learn, later on, or as I would learn later on, the right way to handle this McLaren uh, in this circumstance with this track is to short shift. Um, but I was not doing that, as you can see. Learning the brake points. I'm new on this course, new to this car, uh, but anyway, after a handful of practice laps, you can see my laps all over the board on the right there. Uh, this was my best lap leading into my first race. Uh, and what you'll notice from this lap, in addition to it being quite slow, uh, you'll see me being extra careful accelerating out of these turns. I am short shifting a little bit, even coming out of these turns uh, as they are, but I learned later on that even more significant short shifting is the right way to be able to get on the throttle better here. So still not great with the braking points, still very nervous with this car, very nervous on the throttle. So being very cautious to just try and set a lap. Um, and again, for me, even though this is quite slow and looks very slow uh, based on the limitations of the tires of this car as well uh, this is kind of what you're seeing actually I guess for this this lap I had bumped up it looks like I bumped the traction control up to a level one um, for this lap but uh, after doing a few laps with that on I discovered that the amount that it prohibited you from accelerating out of turns actually ended up slowing my lap time, so uh, I ended up running the rest of this series, um, including all of the races with traction control at level zero, which is the right way to do this, honestly. And I think if you're new to racers uh, like Gran Turismo, or maybe if you're not, maybe if you've been racing them for a while, but you've been leaving the assists on, uh, I feel like there's no better time than now to go ahead and bite that bullet and turn off those assists, learn how to drive in manual, learn how to drive traction control off, and, uh, yeah, so, um, you'll, you know, if there's a learning curve, I definitely had that moment. I forget exactly when, probably around Gran Turismo 3, uh, when I needed to, to kind of take that jump. It takes a while to kind of relearn how to walk, but anyway, my 135, good enough to start P6 in my first race. I was, I jumped into a qualifying session, did not improve my time. So here we are starting my first race and we're going to see how it's going to go. I got a decent launch here. But knowing the quality of my opponents and the nature of online races and, of course, the first corner, I decided to kind of let the carnage happen ahead of me and not charge into the middle of it. Probably, probably not the best idea, mainly because I managed to run wide anyway, which was awful. If you're going to not get in the mix, you might as well at least not run your dumb ass off the course. But anyway, not too much carnage going into that first turn, but I did drop myself into P11 dead last so as we move into the next set of corners there is a bit more people running off but despite that <laughs> with my cautiousness managed not to gain any positions even with people going off the track so getting the worst of both worlds driving slow and not gaining positions from other people's mistakes but as you will see that that trend didn't continue for, <laughs> for about four people went off there I get target fixated on the guy that went off and just literally plow straight into the back of him. I was thinking to myself, man, 
don't run wide. What the fuck was that? And then not only that, in an attempt to try and accelerate back out of that corner, I lost control again. Put it back into the wall, so... Moved up a position to P10. Still dead last. One of the other drivers decided this race wasn't worth continuing. You'll see now I'm up into P9 for the same reason. People, as they're crashing and failing, are just dropping out of the race. Up into P8 from another quit. And I do actually manage an overtake on someone who had had, had an off. And so now I have moved up into P7 of 8. Based in no part on my own skill or ability. <laughs> Uh, this guy behind me is still deciding I'm a better braking source than his own brakes. Uh, again, this, this this quality of competition should improve as not just my skills improve, but also as the game becomes aware that I don't crash into people. As my safety rating and driver rating improves, uh, I will be less likely to get involved in these uh, races with people who use you as brakes. But uh, this guy ran wide there again, and then... About a half a lap, maybe a lap later, catches back up to me again, gets right into my back quarter panel. Just not a great driver. Uh, I'm obviously being slow and nervous because of the power of this car, but um, generally speaking, not crashing into other people using them as brakes. Eventually that guy falls enough behind that he also quits. So I'm up into P7 again. Dead damn last. Just trying my best throughout all of these corners to not spin the car. Here we are going into the final lap. I see these cars ahead of me. I feel like I can maybe catch up to them a little bit. Put a little bit too much throttle on. Put it into the wall yet again. My overzealousness to try and catch up to the cars ahead of me. Costing me yet more time. Get backed onto the track. Straighten it back out. Finish up a minute behind the leader. P7. Wow. The only people I beat <laughs> didn't finish the race. I'm obviously impressed with my performance. And that was my beautiful first race in the McLaren online. Uh, but you can see that my driver rating and safety rating both improved, which was well earned, I think. So moving on to the next race. Uh, here I'm in the qualifying session. I did manage to improve my best lap time to a 134.8, and this is, again, with traction control off. Um, but you can see my lap time is becoming more consistent on the right there. 136, 135, 134, 139. Clearly, consistently becoming my strong suit. Still, even with the improvement, only P6 for this race. And so we will get another launch and see if I can do better this time. So a decent launch here. Uh, I could have pushed up quite a bit more into the pack here, but once again, being a little overly cautious, again, still nervous with the car and not wanting to get completely knackered right in the first turn here. Um, this first turn manages not to be awful. We have one fella go off, um, but generally not the melee I was expecting coming off. This young man decided though that he didn't want to be on the track anymore. Um, so I'm up into P10. Uh, moving into the next turn, and yeah, once again, that cautiousness, perhaps a little too much, but here we'll have more offs, another car going up into the wall, deciding not to be on the course, and this, <laughs> this McLaren visiting the wall as well, so I am once again managing to progress up through the ranks, this guy deploys his air brake, <laughs> decides not to turn, and... Uh, I just continue to gain positions by virtue of being overly cautious and letting the cars around me essentially just leave the course without any assistance. A little bit further into the lap here, we've got this nice green McLaren deploying his air brake. Once again, not remaining on the course. Uh, pulling back in, giving a little tap to the other car, but pushing up hard behind me again. A lot of the drivers at this level just struggling to stay on the track beyond just setting fast time. So I'm taking a cautious approach here, trying to run clean laps, even though I understand that I'm not really on the pace or running very quickly in this race. But uh, another ghostly fellow deciding to go straight into the wall. And I'm feeling honestly a lot better about myself in this race, even though I'm still slow, but 
my laps in general have become more consistent and I'm managing not to run off the course. Ahead of me on the map you'll see here, gentleman went off and decided to quit. He was ahead of me and decided that his mistake was too shameful to continue. So I inherit P5 <laughs> once again through no demonstration of skill of my own. Uh, a new better best lap for me here, 134.4. So again, improving, becoming more consistent, uh, but still just not competitive in this car on this track. Going into the final lap here, I'm just trying to bring it home safely in P5. I've had no major offs in this race and no real overtakes, so I've managed my way up into P5 just by virtue of being more careful than the other idiots in this lobby. So there we go, P5, 28 seconds off the lead. You can see my palpable excitement at my exceptional performance. Uh, once again, um, managing a, a decent result, I got a clean race bonus. Bonus, baby! As I was excited by the small extra amount of money. Once again, my uh, safety rating has gone up here. So... That was actually quite a bit more of a safe race. Wasn't slamming into other people or off the track. But I decided that I knew I was missing something here. So let's ride along with the fastest lap in the world in this car on this track and see what we can learn. And what I'm paying attention to here, as you can see me turning the telemetry on, is primarily the racing line that he's using and the gears that he's shifting in. So you'll see that he's actually running really short shifts here, whereas I would be running this in second or third gear. He's using fourth, and so because of the power of this car, without traction control on to get maximum acceleration, he's really short shifting, getting up into those higher gears very early on, with the exception of this long corner, uh, which is banked decently well, although shifting up into fourth to accelerate out. So my key takeaway watching him, in addition to just him having a better line and using more of the track width, is to get better acceleration out of these turns without spinning out, is to upshift into at least one, sometimes two gears higher than you would expect for being in the power band for this McLaren. So definitely a big takeaway that I'm going to try and see if I can turn around and take into my qualifying and the following race and get a more consistent performance from this McLaren. As he comes accelerating through here using the full width of the track, and I believe he's gonna finish right around a 126. 126.4, which means that my 135s, 130, I think my best lap up to this point is a 134, is a full eight seconds off the pace. As you can see me relating to him as he does a victory spin after his amazing lap. So one lap trying this new one, getting the feel for the acceleration points at a 137, but this is going to be my new best lap using this short shifting. So there you can see me accelerating out of this in third and fourth. I'm able to accelerate a lot harder using these higher gears, um, but still because of the hills and bumps and elevation changes, you still cannot be complacent and this car is still very powerful especially when those turbos kick in so using those short shifts i am already purple for this sector and really seeing a lot of improvement feeling slow through here but not a lot of tire squeal aiming for consistency and just a smooth lap without a lot of excitement um, getting better at taking this turn at a higher speed understanding my braking points better and again shifting down to what would normally be like a second gear turn here um, but accelerating about into third um, so able to get more consistent power down to the track still purple coming into that next sector accelerating through these long bends coming down to the last series of corners and just the car feels a lot more calm a lot more stable and a lot more controllable being able to accelerate hard without babying the throttle as much uh, because we're in those higher gears uh, getting less of that torque so 
boom, second lap after watching that, a 133.6. So I basically improved a full second on my previous best on just my second second attempt. Uh, P6 again. This actually is towards the end of the day. The daily race was about to roll over, which I hadn't quite realized, but I was actually doing this race late. I believe it's actually right about midnight uh, at the time of this race. So this is really the last lobby of the day for this race. Um, so I'm going to use my newfound skills to have a better performance in this race. So not a lot of mess coming through that first corner. Happy to see that. I'm thinking maybe just within two races, uh, it's matched me with some more stable and well-adjusted non-sociopathic drivers. Um, but as it would turn out, there's still quite a bit of noobishness in this lobby. Um, but I do manage to get myself up into P5 and am having a good consistent lap here using these shorter shifts. Um, as you can see, a car here losing a little bit on the power. Swervy, swervy, into the wall, and I'm up into P4 by virtue of not losing control of the car through these corners. Coming down into the last corner before the straight. Um, yeah, this is fast forwarding to the end of my second lap, and you'll see here, not counting the first out lap from the stop, that I'm at 134.5, so already far more consistent in this race. So with this increased level of confidence, I'm moving up on the car in front of me. I decide that I'm going to try and make a push here and see if I can actually get to a position to get an overtake. And as I'm coming out of this corner, I put a little bit too much on it, try to correct, lose it, go into the barrier. Consistency, gone. Progress, lost. <laughs> but I managed to let myself back out onto the track in not dead last just yet. I believe I'm in P5 at this point. So I've lost a position, lost a lot of time, but still confident that I can accelerate more smoothly as I overcook it again coming out of that turn and go straight into the hard stop as the last car passes me, putting me back in dead damn last. A disappointing result in what I felt like was becoming a more consistent race for me. Um, but just was not meant to be on this day. Maybe it was because it was late. Maybe it's because I'm sucky. But finish that lap at a 158 from those two big offs. Finish that up with some more consistent laps at least at a 135, 134.8. And then bring it in at the end with a 134.7. So definitely more consistent other than my big offs, but a good lesson learned. You can see my excitement at doing so well. P6, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, my safety rating, once again, moving up. Again, well earned.